Hi, I'm Andrew Wasson. Thanks for joining me for my weekly guitar blog. It's December 15th, 2013, and this week we're going to cover the use of finger-picked blues technique. And this question was sent in from Rob. He's in Auburn, Alabama, and he wrote in with this email. I've been getting into both electric folk and blues music lately, but the guys I'm listening to don't use a pick. Could you make a video lesson that demonstrates some bluesy style riffs played with finger picking? The sound from guys like Lindsey Buckingham, Johnny Winter, and Jeff Beck is awesome. I'm looking for for some basic study examples of practicing bluesy finger-picked guitar from Rob in Auburn, Alabama. Well, hey, thanks for writing in, Rob. You know, the sound of a finger-picked blues guitar with that classic open or interesting bass line under a bluesy lick or riff is without a doubt a very cool sound, but if you're not well-studied in finger style, this technique might be somewhat difficult at first. However, if you can learn to control your thumb and finger technique in a consistent way, uh, even if it's only with a few ideas at first, the technique will slowly grow on you as your confidence improves. So let's zoom in on the guitar and run through a few ideas to help get you started. Well, in the first example that I have for you, I wanted to set up a static open bass string line. It's going to be a open six string E. And we'll put some chord tones operating above it so our chord for the underlying harmony will just be that of uh, E, a dominant seventh. And the melody will be pulled from a mix of primarily chord tones and extensions. So uh, here's how it works very slowly. I'm going to be using my uh, thumb, index, and middle fingers to start. Then I'm going to shift over because we're going to move uh, between third and first strings. I'm going to shift over to the use of thumb, index, and ring fingers. So we have those two different fingering combinations for the right hand there. Here it is uh, again. So it just operates like that, very lateral movement you can see there. And there's that transitioning that you have to do with your plucking hand where you're uh, transitioning between thumb index and middle and then you know thumb index and ring finger for the uh, string cross that we have between uh, third to the first strings there. Now for the second example I wanted to stick with the open uh, bass note idea again and demonstrate how we can incorporate maybe even some scale runs around uh, more or less the same technical framework. I'm going to swi switch over to the open fifth string A though. Uh, here I have the harmony of an A dominant seventh this time around. But in position, we're going to do uh, some uh, work around the chords and I'm going to add in scale fragments, creating the effect of some lead lines interacting around the underlying harmony. Mm -hmm. So uh, here's the part just played nice and slow. And uh, this one will incorporate uh, just the index and middle fingers with the thumb. Mm -hmm. On that last chord, you know, if you wanted to, you could use middle and ring fingers. But if, you know, if you want to keep it simple, you could get away with this whole thing with just uh, the thumb, index, and middle finger. Here it is one more time. That time I did use the middle and the ring finger on that last uh, t the three note chord with the bass note there. So that's a really good one to uh, start practicing a couple of guitar licks and still keep that droning bass note down below. Now in the next idea, I'm going to move away from the use of a low bass pitch uh, being that of an open string. And we're going to start looking at adding other bass notes. Now instead of uh, having an open string, we'll use some fretted notes uh, across the neck. And uh, you know, when we have the fretted notes off the lower strings, we have access now to uh, many more chord opportunities uh, since the fretted notes can allow for the use of pretty much any key signature that we'd ever want to have access to. And uh, in this next example works through some chord changes that are going to exist uh, around the sound of the D blues harmony. Uh, we're going to start off though off of an A and we're going to have this uh, outline of the A7 chord. And then we'll have our scale run. And we're going to shift down a little bit. And have another scale run, but this time with open third string G. It's going to sound really neat. Then we're going to head into the D sounds here. You can hear that little turnaround idea. Uh, and I really like those drop down sounds. I mean, they're very familiar to people. You've heard them, I guess, a million times. Thank you. 
So very cool idea. Here it is uh, played once more. So that one can be a lot of fun. It starts getting a little bit more technically challenging, but um, it's still not too bad. For my final example, however, uh, we're going to take this finger picking blues principle through several chord types. So we're in here, we're going to be covering a G7, a C7 sound, a F7, and then we're gonna even going to go and wind up on the end there at the E7. So it's going to be quite a lot of chords. All that's going to occur just within four measures. So, you know, it is a lot of chords with quite a busy sound as well. And even though this all comes together to create a more technical technically challenging line, the interesting sound that we achieve through all the harmony movement is well worth the extra effort that, you know, might be involved to develop the parts. So, you know, work on it. It's well worth it. Um, here it is played uh, slowly. We're going to start off with the G7 chord. We'll pedal through it, and then we're going to have a guitar lick idea. Here it is again. Then we're going to head into some busy work, all triplets. It's going to work off of the C7 chord. And then we're going to head to G7 again. Quickly shift down to F7. And then we're going to outline our E dominant 7th chord. Okay, here it is again. playing folk songs, country and western tunes, or blues numbers using the finger picking approach, it's uh, not only really cool sounding, but uh, you know, once the general techniques are developed, it's also a lot of fun. Uh, as you uh, hear from the recordings from uh, guitar greats like Jeff Beck or Johnny Winter, there's a lot of possibilities for interesting bass notes to get added into songs for both the uh, you know song's melody sections as well as for during improvisation. So I'd certainly highly suggest placing this approach into your daily routine, and when it starts coming together for you, I think you'll have so much fun with it that you'll uh, not only impress your friends, but I think you'll impress yourself too. Anyway, that's about all the time I have for today. As always, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great week, and I'll catch up with you next time. Bye for now.